In this tutorial, we'll walk through a few simple steps to show you how easy it is to animate shapes or designs along a path in HANA following a custom trajectory. It's a fun and powerful way to bring your elements to life and create smooth, natural motion with just a few clicks. Let's begin. First, we need to design our path, basically the route we want our shape or design to follow. One of the ways to do this is by using the vector tool. You can click the icon or just press the letter P, then start clicking to draw the path you want your shape to follow. You can start by making simple clicks to place points and then use the bend tool to adjust the curves to your liking. Once the path is drawn, we'll need a shape or element that we want to move along it. Let's bring in a simple ellipse as an example. You can click on the shape tool or press the letter O. If you hold shift while dragging, the ellipse will stay proportional. Let's click and change its color if you'd like. Now to make the ellipse follow the path, select it and go to the modifier section in the right sidebar. Click on the plus icon and choose Align to Path. In the Edit Modifiers section, you'll see an option to select the path you want to use. Click the dropdown and choose the shape we just drew. And now, your shape is connected to the path. You can check the behavior by adjusting the slide value in the Modifiers panel. This lets you see how the element moves along the route. Now let's create a simple animation to explore more about the settings in Edit Modifiers. As you can see, the slide value controls the position of the object along the path. A value of zero places it at the beginning and one places it at the end. To animate from start to finish, we first keep the slide at zero in the base state. Then, in a new state, we change the slide value to 1. After that, we create an event. Let's keep the event set to start so the animation plays automatically as soon as it runs. Click on Transition and set it to go from base state to the new state. Let's leave the other settings as they are for now and press the play icon on the frame to preview. You'll see the shape move from the start to the end of the path following the trajectory we created. If you click on the event, you can make more adjustments. For example, you can control the duration in seconds here and choose from different easing styles. Easing affects how the motion feels, whether it starts slowly, speeds up, or has a bounce, for example. And in the sequence section, you can make adjustments like turning the animation into a loop by selecting infinite. You can set the cycle to ping pong so that the shape moves forward and then reverses continuously. As a result, the shape will travel along the path and then come back, creating a looping effect. You can also create paths using regular shapes. For example, let's use an ellipse. To make the path easier to see, add a stroke by clicking here. You can remove the fill or adjust the opacity to make it transparent. Then create a second ellipse. You can change its color again if you'd like, and then follow the same steps. Go to Modifiers, choose Align to Path, and this time select the ellipse we're using as the path. In this example, we have this animation where both shapes start and end at the same point. They're both aligned to the same path and animated just like we did before. Let's say you want the purple shape to appear slightly ahead of the pink one, in the Align to Path settings for the purple shape in the base state, increase the offset value to move it forward. Let's keep the pink shape at its current position in the base state, then let's check the position in the state. Select the purple shape and switch to its state to get a clearer preview of the alignment. Now you can adjust the position of the pink shape so that when the animation ends, it finishes just behind the purple one. We can leave slide at zero here. Now when you press play, you'll see both shapes moving along the same path, but starting and ending at different points. And in this example, let's understand the difference between using world and tangential orientation. 
If we take an arrow shape and align it to a path using world, you'll notice that when we change the slide value, the arrow keeps its original direction. Even if you try rotating it manually, it won't follow the path's curve naturally. This happens because world keeps the object's orientation fixed in space. It's useful when you don't want the object to rotate, like a UI element that moves but stays upright, or a label that should remain horizontal. But if you want an object, like an arrow or a rocket, to actually follow the direction of the path, then tangential is the better choice. When using tangential, the object rotates automatically as it moves, always pointing in the direction of the path. You can adjust its starting rotation in the right sidebar panel to fine-tune the result and create a more natural movement. This way, an element like the arrow will move along the path and automatically rotate to follow its direction, making the animation feel more natural and smooth. Besides animating movement, you can add micro animations to your elements. For example, this rocket has a small flame animation that continues as it follows the path, giving it more life and energy. This same method works with 3D elements in Spline's 3D editor. Just create a path, select your 3D object, and in the right sidebar, you'll find the Align to Path option, just like in HANA, and you can animate it using the exact same steps. You'll find links to all the demo scenes used in this tutorial in the description so you can explore them, remix your own versions, and share them with us. Bye for now, and see you in the next tutorial.